Some boys and ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Say your name again. Mel for short. Hello, Mel. I'm a megapode. I have big feet. Oh, yay. I used to live across most of southern Australia, but now I'm restricted to very small pockets in Western Australia, South Australia, and Victoria. I'm a member of the Megapode family. There are four Megapodes in Australia. We are the only one that lives in Western Australia. Apart from having big feet, we incubate, incubate our eggs in a mound, not in a nest. So we have to build a nest. And the nest is, the mound is on the ground. And we construct it using vegetation and sand. And I have to put together a mound. including sticks and leaves together into a great big mound that might be three metres across and a metre high. And I wait for the vegetation to decompose, which creates a bit of warmth. I also let the sun shine and let it warm the sand and the vegetation. So I have to make the mound, have a peek. I come in the morning, and I dig the mound out. Cats. Yay. But on the ground we are vulnerable. 
So we have to be quite careful. <laughs> so we come back next morning <laughs> and dig it out again. <laughs> in the middle. It has a moat around it. Not quite sure why we do that, but I think it looks very pretty. <laughs> so, so then the mound is open, pretty much open, but we have to test the temperature because the temperature of the mound on average is 34 degrees, but it varies between about 28 and 38 degrees, probably depending on how hot the sun is or how well the vegetation is decomposed. But 34 is an average temperature. So how do we measure the temperature? Well, nobody really seems to know. Some people think we just stick our feet in the mouth with the tip of the beak. Some people think we use the tongue to measure the temperature. Other people think we use the face. I have a question. I know. My theory is <coughs> we put our whole head in. And we use the skin on the top of our head to measure the temperature. Where there is some crest feathers, but not very dense, so it allows the feathers, I mean the skin, to touch the ground or be very close to the ground and measure the temperature. Nobody really knows. But anyway, whatever we do, we have to make sure the temperature is right. We start working on the mound, as I said, from about June. And from about September onwards, the mound is warm enough that maybe we can start laying some eggs. Not me. I don't lay the eggs, but my partner lays the eggs. So we have to have the mound open. We're both working on the mound. <laughs> Very busy, dust flying all over the place. continual attendance while that happens. The period between egg laying varies a little bit between different mallee but a chingra is every four days. The egg is about 200 grams, 250 millilitres in size, and we lay between <coughs> four and 20 eggs, maybe sometimes up to 35 eggs. 
So every four days you can see that our egg laying is between about September and December with many eggs in the mound. So now we have to make sure we keep the temperature constant. So again, in the morning we come and open up these. every day or every second day and make sure the temperature is right and every fourth day we come back again and lay an egg but the eggs are vulnerable foxes like the eggs and we have photos of a fox coming to one mound and taking an egg and walking away in the middle of the night oh. it likes to crunch on that egg and then it came back for another one Oh. Oh. We also have foxes coming during the day to check out the mound. And sometimes a mallee fowl is there. Oh. So one time I was working on the mound and a fox came up behind me. Oh. And I saw it and I ran away looking over my head to make sure it didn't catch me. Well, luckily I escaped. And the fox didn't take an egg. But it was very frightening. Because foxes take lots of our eggs. Probably only 50% of eggs actually hatch at the end of the day for a variety of reasons. Some is through fox predation, others is because the temperature is not right, or hundred other variables. So, it takes between 60 and 90 days for an egg to come to the stage where it can hatch. That's quite a long time, so two to three months. So lots of the eggs start hatching around about no, late November, early December, and go right through to end of February, early March. So we've seen eggs hatching relatively recently. So we still keep working. Come in the morning. Broken <laughs> egg. Both male and female are doing this, not just the male. A lot of people think, or a lot of texts say, it's just the male working. It's not. It's the male and the female. ready 60 days after laying lays on its back and kicks its legs up and it breaks the top of the egg and that takes a lot of energy so once it's done that it has to rest for a couple of hours but then it does a little bit more scratching and some sand falls through falls through the hole in the egg and the chick then sits on top of the sand that's fallen through and therefore it rises up into in the mound and it does this maybe every 15 or 20 minutes, and then has to have a rest. So finally, it's able to have enough sand underneath it that it's near the surface of the mound. And it sits there for a little while, maybe half an hour or an hour, listening. 
probably can't see through the sand, but it listens. Mum and Dad there, they may protect me if I come out now. Or do I hear a fox digging or any other bird pecking? So I'm not sure whether they hatched during the night as well as during the day, but certainly we have got photographs of chicks hatching during the day, at least three times. And at one there, the, the male bird flew up doing a brolga because it came out right underneath its feet. <laughs> but other times I've seen the head poke out and it sits there for a little while, jumps up, runs out, runs off the mound very quickly into the neighbouring vegetation for protection and camouflage and security. And then you don't see it again. The parents never see it again. They don't have any instruction from the parents. And as a consequence, unfortunately, only 1% of chicks actually survive more than six months. They get taken by foxes or cats or monitors or ravens, kookaburras, you name it, or starve. They may not know exactly what to do. So they have a very precarious life. So we try and do everything we can to protect them by controlling foxes and cats on the property where we can and hopefully their population increases. And certainly since we started doing that here, even though bait is not often taken or we don't see what takes the bait and we still see foxes, we have definitely seen an increase in the number of mallee fowl on mounds and chicks hatching and mallee fowl running around. Yeah. So,